here's how the Lakers championship changed the NBA's landscape. First, we cannot overlook the value bigs played on this Lakers championship run. JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, both that old style center, that rim running guy, the guy that'll block shots, the guy that'll catch lobs. Those are the type of guys that the Lakers proved are still valuable for teams. Now I know what you're all thinking. Dwight Howard didn't really play in the Heat series. Well, up to that point, Dwight Howard did. In, in the regular season, JaVale McGee did. So it's important to realize that they got them there to that point. And you still have Anthony Davis, who's still that seven footer, who can do all the things that Dwight Howard and JaVale McGee did. He just is able to hit the three, hit the midi, you know, the step back and hit big shots, unlike those other two guys mentioned before. This is going to raise the value of free agents like Tristan Thompson, Jakob Pertl, Nerlens Noel, uh, Mason Plumley, all rim running guys who are going to be sought after free agents for contending teams. Secondly, wing defenders continue to skyrocket in this league. Guys like OG Ananobi, Dorian Finney-Smith, Lou Dort, Andre Roberson, they may not be potent on the offensive end, but they're able to guard guys like LeBron James, James Harden, Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum. And guys like that, don't get me wrong, are still going to put up, you know, 40 points in James Harden's case, or LeBron's still going to put up 38 and 9, or Luka Doncic is still going to put up, you know, 25 plus points. The point is that it makes it hard for them to do that. And we saw that with James Harden in that OKC series. Lou Dort, although he wasn't great offensively, he was, he was locking down James Harden and making it to where it was hard for James Harden to get to his, you know, 30 plus points. It was inefficient and it was able to push OKC to force that game seven. Not only are these guys needed to guard the best player, they're also needed to be able to switch. With the NBA continuing to move toward that trend of positionless basketball, you need players that can switch on to like LeBron James at point guard, for example, at six foot eight. You need a guy that can switch onto the wing to, on Jason Tatum or off of Jason Tatum onto a guard. The game is no longer a four guarding a four or a three guarding a three. It's now multi-positional players that are guarding each other. These guys are also not just guarding the best player on each team. They need to have the ability to switch onto other players to where there's no liability on the defensive end. We see this with the Lakers this year, the Bucks this year, the Rockets a couple years ago where they literally switched everything. Guys that can switch are so much more valuable even if offensively they can be game planned out of series. Like I said about big is in the first point. Because of this, we're going to see guys like Jay Crowder, Torrey Craig, Semi Ojale, and even Andre Roberson, who again on the offensive end can't do really anything, go up in value, especially this offseason with this Lakers championship run. My next point continues to focus on the point of having guys that are able to switch onto any player that you can have on the court. And this is with the Lakers backcourt size. Danny Green, KCP, Alex Crusoe, not to mention LeBron James at point guard, were all 6'5 or taller and are able to switch off of a guard and onto a wing and make it hard for guys to score. We saw the Raptors struggle with smaller guard lineups, for example. Although Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet are both very good defenders for their size, when they get switched onto a Giannis or a Jimmy Butler, it makes it almost impossible for them to do anything on the defensive end. Because of this, guys like Tyrese Halliburton, Killian Hayes, Sadiq Bey at the two, we're gonna see guys like that have their stock rise in the draft, even if their games aren't fully developed. Finally, because of all the points that I mentioned before, the Lakers really put pressure on contending teams and fringe contending teams going into this next season. The Clippers especially. With LeBron's resurgence and the Lakers showing that they have a team that is built for another championship run, it puts teams like the Mavericks, the Rockets, the Nuggets, the Jazz on pause and maybe looking toward the 2021-2022 season as opposed to next season for their championship push. And then you have the teams that are looking toward next year, Golden State with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson back. What are they gonna be able to do? The Clippers obviously have so much pressure on them to perform again after just completely falling flat in the playoffs. And then you have, again, the Nuggets, like I mentioned before, who are kind of in that middle area. Will they try to go for that next piece to go all in or will they wait for that 2022 season? Going back to the Clippers, they have tons of pressure on them this year to perform. You have Kawhi and Paul George both on the last year of their contracts. They fired Doc Rivers, Marcus Morris, Patrick Patterson, Reggie Jackson, Montrez Harrell are all free agents this year, and then they don't have a point guard. Pat Bev wasn't there in the playoffs, and they didn't really he wasn't even really a creator to begin with. So what are they gonna do to try to make that push to dethrone the Lakers after being considered the favorites last season? 